grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. It's so nice to see you here. Summer has come to Dover. And to us here at 17 Springdale Avenue, where we are a welcoming community of faith and service since 1762, and we're delighted to see you here. For those of you who have braved the unair conditioned sanctuary this morning, and to those of you who are tuning in online, we are glad to welcome you here to the Dover Church, an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ, which means, as we say every Sunday, that no matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. To our folks joining us online, I want to say really quickly that I will be leading the prayers today. So if you came into this online space with a joy or a concern to lift up, please type it in the YouTube chat or you can text it to me at 508-269-8406. And if you're here in the space, there'll be a time during the offering to send up prayer cards with your written prayer requests. And I know we've, we've been in the habit of saving these things till we get to announcements, but we have Amazingly, another 39th birthday being celebrated today. Lindy. Hey, wave to everyone. This is Lindy and she's 39. <laughs> Shall we sing? Let's sing. from your daughter yeah, this morning, request. making especially sure that we remembered it was your birthday, which I thought was very sweet. In the beginning part of the service. <laughs> exactly. I would like all of you who are comfortable and able to please rise and join with us in the call to worship, which you'll see printed in your bulletins. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord, the Lord is, is good. good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Our hymn of adoration this morning is number S43, which means you'll find it in the front. Come we who love God's name.
God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Holy God, at the heart of our faith in you is a simple idea. You create us for love, to live in love with you, with each other, and with ourselves as we truly are. These loves are the best, best part of our lives. To our great chagrin, we confess that all too often we allow our love for each other to sour and fade. This is all too true here in the church. We just get lazy or apathetic and allow our friendships to fade away or prioritize other parts of our lives and just drift away ourselves. On top of this, we often struggle to get um, help us to renew our hearts for love for one another, for you and for ourselves, that as we welcome new people into the church, we might live into our vows that make this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Brothers and sisters, have hope. Our God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light, and God is in the light, God will wash away all darkness. God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. You, and there's nothing you can do about it. So I'd like to invite the Baronellos and the Chens to come forward and join us for one of my happiest times every year when we welcome new members into the church. Come on in. We're so happy to have you here to unite with us in this household of faith. Friends in Christ, we are all received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. But these people found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ, which is quite remarkable because they came to us in a time of COVID, where we couldn't be together, where we were watching on television, where there weren't a lot of kids in the Sunday school. Everything was not as it was. But through prayer, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to join with us today and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They're here to, for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Brothers and sisters, hear the words of Jesus. I am the vine and you are the branches. Anyone who abides in me and I in that person is the one who bears much fruit. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So by your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. And today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this place in this time. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. So we only have one question for you this morning, and I will even help you with the answer. <laughs> Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God, and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world as best as you are able? If so, please say, I promise, with the help of God. I promise, with the help of God. Lisa? Let us, the members of the Dover Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. 
We welcome you, you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayer as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. We have to pause one moment because I know they haven't memorized the next part yet. <laughs> we say covenant together. And uh, somewhere here, there it is at the bottom of that page. Lisa. For 260 years, there have been faithful people in this place worshiping God and serving the world in Christ's name. We are a people of covenant promises, promises we make to God, to ourselves, to each other, and to the world beyond these walls. Living into these promises is what our life together is all about. Our covenant is the tie that binds us together in unity and love. Please rise and join with these newest members and let us speak again our promises. Saying together, we, we the members of the Dover Church, humbly repenting of our sins and trusting in God's grace to save, guide, and strengthen us, hereby engage to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We agree to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. We take the Lord Jesus as our master, his spirit as our spirit, his way of life as ours. We promise to work, to pray, and if needs be, to suffer, for the establishment of God's kingdom of righteousness, freedom, and love among all people. We agree to do our part in maintaining the services of this church at home and abroad, to promote its honor and peace, to submit to its discipline, and to be kindly affection one unto another. Now, if I were the Apostle Paul, I'd be giving you a kiss, but it's too hot for that, and there's COVID. So we welcome you all to the church, and we're delighted to have you here. We have um, Christine so you. has baked you a special treat. Feel the weight of our love. <laughs> There's another one for Mr. Branson. And cards as well? Cards as well. Let us join together in celebration of this moment by praying together the prayer found in your bulletin. O oh God, God, you are our God, God and we, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered into this church and rejoice that you have increased our community of faith. Together may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. So open our hymnals to 368 and let us sing together a hymn of fellowship. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, you can go back to your seats. <laughs>
Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. I invite you to turn and greet one another with signs of peace and love. And um, the children can go to Sunday school. Mrs. Danielski down in the basement. So it's not coffee hour yet. No, that's fine. Ah, the joy of new members. And I didn't notice that anywhere in our covenant says that I must wear a robe when... (laughs) very hot out, submitting to the discipline, but suffering for the kingdom of God, suffering not just for the purpose of a photo opportunity. Our lesson this morning comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles, and it's the story of how Paul comes to be in Macedonia. And it's a fascinating little story because we see how Paul has this goal to go and spread the good news to people he's never met before. And he's going to figure out how to do it and how it's going to work in each situation. And we see that he meets resistance and he has to change his plans. We see how he adjusts on the fly and finds his way and how he's always open to the movement of the Spirit in the life of the church. And that is part of the lesson for us this morning. Let us together call God's spirit into the hearing of these words by praying together our prayer for illumination. O Lord, our God, you offer us in scripture words of life, which through faith become our word of life. Help us to listen for that word in our lesson this morning. Amen. As Max shared, our reading for today comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, beginning at verse 6. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail then from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city in the district of Macedonia in a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. And she was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Here ends our reading. May God add a blessing to our understanding and our living of these words, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able and let us join together in our act of praise.
slides over here, so hopefully I'm not sitting in your line of sight, but there will be something behind me in a moment once I finish praying. Let us pray. Open my lips that my mouth might show forth your praise. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. That's not my dog. I didn't say it, but that's what I was thinking. Oh, she's not there. Well, you'll see her, not my dog, in a moment. But I was looking down at this shaggy little black dog with big eyebrows. It's not my dog. It's hard to believe it now, because she was the best dog ever. Those of you who knew Ella know what I mean. She changed my life. That's not my dog. That's the first thought I had when I saw her. Still know Ella? Yeah, it's frozen. Ah, it froze. Oh, well. I, the story works without the pictures, but you keep working on it. What's that? Oh, oh the people online can see it. Everyone get out your phones. I had come right over to the Situate Animal Shelter when the moment they called. We have just the dog for you. And I was excited because I had wanted a dog for a long time. But not just any dog. I had a really particular dog in my mind, a very clear vision of a big, muscle-bound, bone-headed Labrador who I could roughhouse with and who would ride shotgun with me in my little red pickup truck. Back then, I was living in a rundown one-bedroom beach cottage near Hummerock. For those of you who know it, it's part of Marshfield. And I was the full catastrophe. I had a beard and bad haircuts. In the cold weather, I wore jeans, flannel shirts, and duck boots. And in the warm weather, it was shorts, a fishing shirt, and tevas. As I said, I drove around in a little red pickup. And I always had a sea kayak up on the rack. And all of my fly rods were rigged up and ready to go at a moment's notice. Even before I got the dog, I already had three cats in this little wreck of a house that I was living in. And I was working as the part-time associate at the Second Congregational Church of Cohasset which meant that there was really great striped bass fishing. And at the same time, I was a full-time student at Andover Newton Seminary in downtown Newton. So between learning how to be a pastor and being a pastor and fishing all the time, I thought I was living the dream. All I needed was a big dog to complete the dream or tip the whole thing over into catastrophe. So. The phone rang, and I jumped into that little red pickup and raced over to Situate to meet just the dog for me. I got there, and I met Eileen, a bright and happy woman at the front desk, and she took me in the back and walked me past six other dogs that were yipping and barking and jumping to the last pen in the back of the room. And in that pen sat a little black dog who was quietly looking at us as we opened the door. There she is. So I came in softly. And by softly, I mean slowly, with my hands by my side. No sudden moves, no verbal outbursts. And this little dog just sat there and looked at me from under, my big, under her big eyebrows. There was no tail wagging, no lip licking, no jumping. I could see, as you can see now, that she was a shaggy mix of terrier and schnauzer. So I squatted down to be at her eye level, and I offered my hand gently to make her acquaintance. Now the moment my hand entered whatever she thought was her room, she proceeded to pee the floor and roll over on her back with her paws up in submission pose, which brings me back to where the sermon began. That's not my dog. My dog's supposed to be jumping up right now and licking my face. So I knelt down, and I started to rub her belly. And from that moment on, 
It was like she had always been my dog. She was so easy, so gentle, so enthusiastic, and her name was Ella. When I said, that's not my dog, it's because when I first saw her, she wasn't. Because I wasn't able to see her as she really was. I wasn't able to see who she was and who we might be. Because in my mind, I was living all of these stories. You know, we all have stories in our minds, these fantasies we have about the grass somehow being greener on the other side of the fence, or all of our awfulizations about how, thing, how bad things are going to be in the future going from bad to worse. And so I had these fantasies, and the name of that story was Me and My Dog, none of which had a character that looked like her in them. The truth be told, there probably wasn't a character that looked like me in those stories. The guy playing me looked more like Robert Redford in his late 30s. Oh my gosh. I know, but that's how the mind works. It keeps us from seeing what's right there in front of us and what is possible and it keeps us locked into what's impossible. It took a little dog pee and a moment of submission pose and a belly rub to break down my barriers and open my eyes. And after I lived with Ella for years, I started to wonder to myself, how many other possibilities had I missed in my life? because I couldn't see what was right in front of me. Now, I know you're thinking right now that this is a silly sermon about a dog and her fool. And the interesting thing is, I thought when I put these pictures together is, Ella's glory years happened in the age of the flip phone. So there are no pictures of her with the cats in the broken down house. There are no pictures of her striped bass fishing with me on the rocks outside of Cohasset. There are no pictures of her riding shotgun in the little red truck or at the seminary or at church. But it's not a silly sermon. This is actually about to become a serious sermon about being a Christian in the 21st century here in Dover. It occurred to me that it's sort of embarrassing to tell anyone that you're a Christian these days. Because when you say the word Christian, many people think, oh, those toxic people, or oh, those irrelevant people, or oh, those people are not a solution, they're more part of the problem. You go to churches around the country, and I've been in a few in my life, and you can't tell if you're in a Democrat meeting or a Republican meeting. It all depends on which church, which town the church is in. In other words, the church is more like the politics of the town than the church being the church. Young people, by the droves, have turned away from Christianity because they find some Christians too judgmental and too narrow, and other Christians too ineffective. If they want to make a difference, they think, well, I won't waste my time trying to do it through the church. I'll do it somewhere else. There are so many churches in our country that are in decline, where membership's going down, and they spend all of their time trying to keep the people that are still with them happy. They don't dare do or say anything that means anything because they're a club about member preferences. Well, we know we like this, so this is what we're going to do. When they forget, even here, we call ourselves the Dover Church, but we are really a mission outpost on this hill in a sea of people who don't know what we're doing. Now the funny thing about this is, is back in my Ella years, and you've seen in the pictures, I was a different man back then. I'm gonna, this is a confessional moment. At that time, I thought the best thing that could happen to the church is they all burned down, and we start again from scratch. And we didn't have these buildings to tell us what we had to do. And look at me now, the senior pastor at the Dover Church in 1762. But the fact is, my mind has not changed. I'm not into arson, but <laughs> what we do here 
is supposed to be about transformation. It's supposed to be about our transformation. Like me, that's not my dog. Ah, me and my dog. And then going out into the world, doing transformative work of love. We spend so much time going, that's not my church. That's not what I want to do. Instead, we need to listen to the gentle whisper of love calling us to new members, to new relationships, to new ways of being the church, to the calls out in the world. That's what we're here to do. Those are the promises we made this morning. And I pray that we might be set free from whatever, other, whatever blinders we might have that keep us from seeing that. Amen. And thank you for getting her up there. This is the last day of her life. Oh. She still wanted to be with me. I think it's you. Oh, yes, excuse me. With thankfulness, we give in gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With hopefulness, we give in commitment to God. With gladness, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to our Lord. of the gifts you have given us, and through the working of your spirit, bless and multiply them for the building of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. We come now to a time of community prayer. I invite you to open your hearts to the movement of God's spirit May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, 
We come before you today on this radiant Sunday morning in the midst of a transformation of springtime into summer. And we thank you, God of transformation, for all that you make new, all that you make whole, all that you transform in our lives. We're grateful for this community of faith, a space of transformation. And we lift up the way you move in and through us, helping to mold us evermore in your image, calling us along your paths. I thank you, God, for the many missions and ministries of this church, for the Mission and Action Committee, in their work in bringing transformation beyond the walls of our buildings, through family promise, a place to turn, and so much more. I thank you, God, for the ministry of our tea and check-in group, those Thursday afternoon ladies who dedicated today's flowers to Beth Benjamin, for women's spiritual friendship, who gather in friendship and fellowship and prayer, who supply today's coffee hour for our lay leaders, deacons and greeters and ushers, big and small, for the new members we welcome today and the transformation that they will bring with them into our community. God, we are so grateful for how you make us new and you call us to be more than we think we can be. But in our gratitude, we recognize that so many corners of this world, so many corners of our own hearts are in need of transformation, are in need of your wholeness and your healing. We pray today with all those who mourn praying for comfort, for peace, for light. Lifting up in particular the Sexton family and all those who mourn and grieve the loss of dear Tyler, who passed away last week at 41. We pray, God, that your light and your love could be known to those on that long walk of grief that they would know, come what may, they never walk alone. We join with Lori Hunt in praying for her longtime friend Susie, who began in-home hospice care on Friday. We pray for her, for her comfort, for her peace, for her sense of connection in the days ahead. And we pray for all those who love her, including Lori, that their words, that their presence, may be a conduit of your light and love in her life. We pray for the brokenness of our world, lamenting the epidemic of gun violence that continues to spread across our nation. Our hearts broken, in particular, by the way this violence is so often motivated by racial hatred, so often perpetrated on houses of worship. God, we pray for healing. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for urgency to make change. We lift up, God, our siblings in Ukraine. As a war continues to range in their homeland, we pray for peace above all else, for the softening of hard hearts, for protection of the most vulnerable, for a new way forward, one of wholeness and reconciliation. And on this summer Sunday, God, we pray for our climate. As natural disasters continue to take the lives of so many across our country and across our world, we pray for those affected by tornadoes and floods landslides and water and wildfires. And we pray, God, for the urgency and the wisdom to act before this loss becomes more and more commonplace. We give you thanks, God, that you recognize us as yours, even when we fail to recognize ourselves, 
that you promise transformation when we feel stuck in sameness. Give us the courage, God, to say yes to you every day, and in so doing, to follow in the footsteps of your son, Jesus, who walked alongside us, healing us, encouraging us, eating with us, and teaching us. And so we pray now the words that he taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have quite a lot of announcements for you again this morning. It seems like a theme here at the Dover Church. If you want, if you want to experience transformation, just hang out with Beth Benjamin. She's like a... I mean, look in this thing, all the stuff that's going on, and it's all going across her desk. Um, you know, if you want to help teach the fellows from Afghanistan how to drive, you can sign up and just go for a ride with them. Um, they need to get so many hours. Mm -hmm. Transformative. One guy, he's working at an auto parts store, but if he can move cars, he's going to move up. He can get a raise, and you could be part of that. And other exciting news and ways to get involved, we have a bike drive coming up on June 4th here at the church. Um, you can bring your bike, they'll be packed up and taken to people who need new bikes. And our Afghan friends benefited from this program, so we're really excited to be part of it. That's on June 4th. If you have any size bike, those are welcome. Yep, and any condition too, although if it's a total wreck, you know, if Wade won't take it over at the transfer station, oh. you probably shouldn't bring it to us. Um, we're looking for some more grown-ups to come to Maine with us. You want transformation? Come to Maine and help build some houses with teenagers. 50 Sarah, teenagers. Yeah, 50, we have 50 kids coming. We need um, and we had one, uh, one group of grown-ups who couldn't make it. Um, so we're looking for a few more. It's a great time, but it's not as rough as it has been in the past. You do get to stay in dormitories and eat university cafeteria food. So that's a big upside. So speak with us, June 26th through July 2nd, um, and you will both watch transformation and be transformed. Yes. We also are continuing our food drive for a place to turn through the end of May. We've been excited for all the donations that we've brought in. There's more information in the bulletin about exactly what they're looking for, but time and time again, a place to turn has said that the Dover Church is the most consistent uh, support of their organization and we want to live into that especially as they go into the summer months where kids aren't in school where they get free meals and when in between holidays there's a lull in giving so it's really important that we can give what we can now to help them make it through the summer months mm. and then finally um, we had a council meeting when was that Wednesday Laurie and it occurred it, it appeared on that call that a lot of people didn't know our relationship with Family Promise. They thought it had gone away because the families weren't staying with us anymore. And that happened during COVID, but they have a day center over in Natick, right near the hot dog place. If you drive along North Street, it's not North actually, I don't know what that street is there, but um, we're gonna, we have a week coming up, June 20th, where they need meals. So you make something and bring it over. Um, this is a great ministry for families that are trying to transition out of homelessness back into home, homes. And we've played a part in that for as long as I've been the pastor here at the Dover Church and a little bit beyond. So please, if you'd like to help out in that way, um, these folks are our neighbors from, from Norfolk County. Um, so you can really make a difference. Are there other announcements? Yes. I just wanted to flag that we have an exciting couple weeks coming up. Oh, yes. June 5th, we'll have Confirmation Sunday, which will be really fun. We have a great group of young people. It'll be exciting to celebrate them and hear from them. Um, and then on June 12th is Celebration Sunday. And that's the service that we lift up, especially the youth and children's ministries of the church. We'll have fun music. Um, the children will be taking 
all these different roles in worship and we'll have a special coffee hour afterwards. So we really hope you all can participate and be here for those Sundays. And I think the 12 guys from Afghanistan will be with us too to celebrate. That's a major ministry, this church. Oh, that's right, I'm supposed to mention that. So Beth and I went to Catholic Charities thank you dinner on, and I got my picture taken with the Cardinal. I don't know if he knew it was me. <laughs> but I'm right behind him. I, if it makes it to the globe, I'm right behind him. I was thinking about doing this behind him, but I didn't. So we have this little award. Um, 160 folks, refugees from Afghanistan, were helped by, through Catholic Charities, and, and we worked with them. But our church was the only church, uh, Protestant church, that did it by itself. Others were part of consortiums. Now, we are part of a consortium with the Pilgrim Church and Ward 2, but when we started, we weren't. Um, so we'll put that right on Beth's desk where everyone can see it. Um, and, and folks from Ukraine are coming now, and that's a whole different thing because they need sponsors, uh, which is different. I, I don't understand the rules, but Beth does. And um, so we may be helping them too. We'll see. Um, are there any announcements to come from the congregation this morning? Well then, I would invite you all to open your hymnals to 366 and disregard the very confusing way this song looks and just know that it's a very simple song. We're marching in the light of God. And then we sing, we are singing, then we sing, we're dancing, and then we're praying. That's all. But it's a great little happy song, a South African freedom song. Please rise and join with me. And Kayla. Back in the days when I thought the best thing that could happen is if the church burned down, I used to imagine that it was like a C-150 and the back door was opening and we were all going to run out that back door. And, ah! But we're going to go to coffee hour because the Women's Spiritual Friendship Group is inviting us. But then you can jump out of the plane that is the church. And we pray, I tell her often, 
You're lucky you didn't know me back in the day when I was much more high energy than I am now. <laughs> but we do pray, and we pray that whatever blessing you might have received this morning, whether it was in welcoming our new members, or the songs we sang, or the, the pictures, or Ella and Sebastian being able to get the pictures up there, the sermon, the prayers, the beauty of this place, that it takes hold in your heart and bears fruit to the coming of God's kingdom in our world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance unto you this day and give you peace. Amen.